McKinley will tip us off in midcourt. 6'6 McKinley versus the 6'7 Choa. To get us started here, the referee will throw this one up. Let's play ball. Choa wins that one, taps it over to E. John, and Tynes will get us going. A student section, maybe 10 students on that end of the floor, but enough to make some noise. It's that football team, dude. We saw them here a couple weeks ago against Upper Iowa, and they brought the house out. Same with the band, too. We got a high school band here from Zionsville here. Choa going up for the early shot, got fouled. He'll go to the line early in this one. The foul going to be called on Trey Shannon. Obviously the first foul line. Shannon sending Kendrick Choa to the line. He's 60% from the line this season. Has been much improved. From the, from the stripe these last five or six basketball games. Shoma looking to provide the first points of this contest. The first one is short. Shoma obviously last year's GNLBC Player of the Year, Midwest Region Player of the Year. This year certainly in the running for those accolades, but stat-wise a little bit behind what he was last year, but still providing an impact on the floor that the Greyhounds are accustomed to seeing. Yeah, he wasn't able to get out of free throw to go. So Williams will have their first possession with just a sudden inbound. And you know, with Kendrick, you know, I mean, obviously it wasn't the start that we were looking to see. And then he finally got into that Kendrick Choa form that we're used to seeing. Look at this now. Averaging 13 points a game, 7 rebounds. Again, Kendrick is, is back to prime, Kendrick. McKinley with it, went in the corner to Sutton. He'll drive, tapped away the Greyhounds rebound. Here comes Josiah Tynes down the floor. He wants Choa down low. They love Choa down low in the early going, but can't get the tough shot to go. Good contest by the Cardinals. And they look to provide the first point of the game. McKinley's pump faking. They'll look around the arc as they do so often. Now with Sutton in that corner, it's Jermaine. Back up to his counterpart in McKinley. Working on Choa. Choa defending the top of the arc. We'll see how this one goes. McKinley can look the drive. Spinning to the right. McKinley nowhere to go with the ball. Flaps it into the corner. Money. That one didn't even touch. Rip. Isaac that was... Patterson. I have this thing highlighted because he's the top three-point shooter on this squad. 47% from outside the arc this year. This William Jewel team has three big-name players. Isaac Patterson, Kobe McKinley, Jordan Jermaine. Lee John wanted to answer but couldn't do so. Great but, now still have a goose egg on the board. On this thing, though, here with Patterson, McKinley, Jermaine, they average 12, 16, 18 points respectively. McKinley under the basket, flips it over his head and off the glass, fine, nothing early for William Jewell. William Jewell providing the energy and spark in the early going so far, Graham's looking to answer. Here's the John missed the three last time now, and they want Walker up top for a three ball, it looks to be short, and runs off the front rim, tapped, rebound into Choa, who lays it home, it's the first points for the That was a good put back there for Choa to get the Greyhounds their first points of the day, but solid shots all around. Here's Patterson had the three to get this game going. Now with Justice Sutton moving the left street from McKinley. He, he pops back out, pump fake. There's the ball in the right hand. No reset with Shannon. They'll drive in on the taller Choa off the glass. Great throw up the scoop and go over the hand of Eja. 7 2 Cardinals in the early going. Josiah Tynes, once he gives that screen left, there's two there. He'll drive inside, step back out, lost the ball, stolen away, tapped around. Williams will control, they have four on a few down the floor. Great pass out to Shannon, got one to fly by, and Bingham lays it home, 9-2 Cardinals. Trey Shannon getting past Kendrick Chaw. Kendrick is seven, in, uh, seven inches taller than Shannon, somehow able to muscle his way through. Tynes hand off to Ejon, flips it over to him, he'll drive to the right side. The race is up, spread for the Greyhounds, the next chance. Walker now over to Bingham. Bingham bodies into and Jermaine and draws a foul on the Cardinals. And now we'll see those three subs for the Greyhounds, including the seven foot German Julian Steinfeld, Zach Zuhl, the transfer from Ohio Dominican, and Sean Craig, the sophomore for uh, Sylvania, Ohio. Zuhl inbound now for the Greyhounds as Walker, Choa, and Eja check out. The two staying in for the Greyhounds are Tynes and Bingham. Number two and three. Zool inbounds. Once Bingham first, and now throw it over to Steinfeld. Hand off back for Zool rolling around to the free throw line. Now down low, the errant pass looking for Steinfeld. A turnover from the Greyhounds. William Zool can take a double digit lead here with a three ball, but Nick to go inside. Now they have the open look. Can it be so? No, that Sutton cannot get that one to fall home, but not with the rebound goes into the hands of Jordan Germain. 
another chance for William Jewell. That one falls short from Isaac Patterson. And the rebound fought for for the Greenhouse. How about the hustle there from Jordan Germain? And then wide open, Josiah Tynes. Three ball from Joe. Great to see him get his first bucket to go. 33% on the year from outside the arc has really improved that mark as the year has gone on. So he's one of the team captains here. Who's WICR and UNI TV's own Ken Colbert always say he's that cerebral player. McKinley right into the body of the Greyhounds. And a great mid-air adjustment to get that one off the scoop. William Jewell attacking the heart of the UNI defense so far. Bingham up top looking to drive left-handed on into the body of Jermaine. Turnaround right hand hook off the glass. No good. Steinfeld rebound getting hacked down low. And they'll call a jump ball going the way of William Jewell. So that'll take us to our under 16. Two these two teams, some Midwest regional rankings were released. I think it's either yesterday or today. The initial ten teams that there are that are in consideration for the Midwest Regional the first official rankings next week. Three GLBC teams were in that top ten. That's UND, Upper Iowa, and William Jewell. Two of those squads here today playing each other Indianapolis and William Jewell. 11-5 is the early cardinal advantage. Into the hands of Windsor for the first time. Picks it back over to McKinley. The GMC logo got hacked a few times. Standing with the ball now, right wing. Five to shoot for McKinley. He'll go. Step back. Three on Zool's head. Ooh. Kobe McKinley. Nine points. Cardinal advantage. Zach Zool over to Bingham looking for an answer. Bingham does so. That's cash. That's student section filling in nicely. Right near that basket. On the left side, but still a six point deficit. As Patterson gets the ball stolen away by Walker. Three on two down the floor. Walker over to Craig. Another one looks to be long, it is, but three from Steinfeld. Look at another one. Bingham gets the third chance, and that one falls home 14 10. Three chances for the guy that wears number three, Jesse Bingham. Lead the way down five points. Me and Caden were able to talk to him on Monday in last call. And Shout out. Bingham is a really cool dude. He, he is a very, very nice man. Very genuine, down-to-earth guy. Driving right Ooh. inside. No one near him. Jordan Jermaine, the Greyhound, just lost track of him on the defensive end. Did you see Jermaine just take on the form of the Air Jordan logo there for a second? Zach Zool with it. Screen left from Steinfeld. He'll roll, and he'll get the ball, and he'll slam it home. And that's the easiest. That's the, that's the picture-perfect pick-and-roll right there. And you know everyone loves this. The band loves it. The student section loves it. I mean, there's nothing more in this arena that gets everyone fired up than the Julian Seinfeld dunk. The Greyhound still trail by four. Though the ball in the hands of Eli Wingert. And down low, Shannon kicks it into the corner. Patterson, three ball, long. Greyhounds back down on the floor with Zach Zool playing the point guard right now. Same play. Steinfeld left. He'll roll again. He'll get the ball again. This time nowhere to go with the, the dunk. But Sean Craig three in the corner is Cash. Greyhounds right back in this. Gold trap in the corner. He'll flip it back over to top to Shannon and they'll get over midcourt. Winder once again. Defense chance of rain. But driving inside and easily getting it home. I thought Patterson might go for a highlight reel there, but Patterson just simply playing it safe and then rolling up fingertips. Kind of surprising to get caught for uh, walking with it there. I thought he I think, took the I think it was the gather step beforehand. I think it was the, the gather and the two. Three-point game, Zach Zool. Here's Jay Wall, Jarvis Walker. Lost it without a back. It will right to him then. But it's swatted away by Eli Wingert. Here's Jordan Germain. Top of the key. Back over to Shannon. He went down low for Wingert. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Steinfeld. Crosses court. McKinley, he's left wide open, and that's what you can do. He turned around before the shot even fell. I mean, we're not even halfway Ice through. Ice in his veins. We're not even halfway through this, and Kobe McKinley already has 10 points. And he was shut down for the most part in the game at Liberty, Missouri. But today, he's out for some blood. Zach Zool with it. His team down by six, and that's going to go the other way. If they're going, he's got a common foul. No extra 
flagrant or anything. So referee discuss things and what was going on as previously scheduled. Zul just got a big break there. I mean, he's going to be back well, on the bench. Speaking of breaks, he's getting a break on the bench, like you said. Literally. 21-15, your score. The Cardinals with the early advantage here. McKinley will get the hand, will hand off. Now with Wingard up top, back to McKinley. They wanted to get it to him, you would think. Now here's the handoff for Sutton. Winger once again, rolling inside on Craig. Back into the wing, seven to shoot for the Cardinals. Here goes Jermaine, bounce pass to McKinley. Two to shoot, one to shoot, has to get one up off the glass. No good, shot clock violation as the ball did not hit the rim. Of course, Otto wanted the break, but at that point, it's one you got to call off the really shot clock violation. The ball did not touch any part of the rim. With the Greyhound, number one defense showing true right there. Compared to the normal 21 points, not ideal for the Greyhound's defense so far. But here's Times. That's his base initially. Now back to Walker. Up top, three. Roll, oh. rims out. Toa, strong rebound. No Ooh. continuation. And he'll inbound for the Greyhounds. I wasn't sure, too, if Walker got the shot off in time. I mean, I wasn't sure if Trey Shannon was kind of blocked at the very last second, so... But so still, we'll that would have been cool. the top to Now it's up Walker again up top. And one times a wing three ball. He fell. The ball here is all the air. Toe on the floor and a rebound. Jump ball is going to go the way of the Grants. Times may have gotten a little tap on the shoe there. I don't know if he was fully allowed his landing space in that three ball. Just cost him to fall. By the way, the Greyhounds, 11 to shoot on the shot clock. Go inbound from under their own basket. Down by six. Get a quick clean of the floor and make sure no one falls in the slick spot. We saw a slip in the women's game. You think this side Ty just trying to warm the crowd up? You think he's trying to talk something other there with Jarvis Walker? I think he's talking to Walker. I don't I think, think so the players too. are talking to the crowd <laughs> at this point in the game. I mean, maybe trying to get him hyped up. You never know. <laughs> Walker pull up mid range. Jay, that was long. Rebound falls into the hands of EJ. He can't get it to go. But a foul will bring two free throws upon David E. John Shores. David E. John chance to get his first points of the contest. He's only 0 for 1 today. That shot was from outside the arc. So from on this year, E. John, he leads the team for active players at least today in free throw shooting at 84%. Two shots for him. Trying to get the Greyhound a little closer. Got a highlight so far in the season for him. He had a very impressive double double. Pitt Johnstown, they got him 17 points, 14 rebounds, season eight career high for him, and it also awarded him GLBC Player of the Week at the time. One more for E. John. Both of them are good. Four point game. The Greyhounds, though, they haven't gotten a field goal in the last two and a half minutes. William Joe playing some great defense so far. William Joe's fourth in the conference defensively. Greyhounds, obviously, number one. Winger with it up top. Hands it off for Shannon. At the top of the key, he's going to go to the right side now back. And he's set. Very out, preventing anything from him going inside. Shannon puts it back in the corner. Pump fake Jermaine's floater in the mid range. Can't go. And Walker tips the rebound to EJ. Here come the Hounds again. And Sean Craig, now to go with the ball down, finds David EJ up top. William Joel playing some tight defense right now. Crossover. Ooh. David EJ. Here he goes down the lane. David EJ, what a move. Put that on a highlight reel. We need like a crowd like or something because the crowd is definitely getting into it. That, that right there, David Ejaw, put William Jewel on skate there for a little bit. Here's Shannon on the right side. The lead now down to two for the Cardinals. McKinley thought about it. Hines guarding up. Bill Rowe the right got the screen and the switch going into the body of Walker. No good. Show a strong rebound through contact. The Greyhound chance to tie or take the lead for the first time. The Browns have been trailing all game so far. First half of the first half, they've been down every minute of it, every second of it. Hands off for Eja. Now it's time. And that one's going to go the other way. You saw the extension from Eja. You just can't do that on a screen. I mean, that was a pretty clear shove. Bingham, Zool, and Dylan Ingram will check in for the Grand Hounds. Choa, Times, and Eja sitting. First again for Dylan Ingram. Transfer over from Mary Vilber. He was the freshman of the year just two years ago. And he also recently, new season high points, nine. Last week at Quincy. 
We haven't seen as much from him as we thought we might see this year coming out of Maryville. He had that freshman of the year campaign with the Saints and hasn't produced as much since then, but still a great contributor to this Greyhound squad. He's number one in the conference. Always a go-to threat. But here's McKinley. Ingram right up on him. Ingram working to work defensively. McKinley pass him. Floater is good. Take a piece of every rim on the way in, but fell. A little bit of pinball action going every which way. Zool with it. Between his legs twice, working to the right side, gets past the defender. May have traveled no way either way. Walker. No good. McKinley rebounds. McKinley 12 points to his name so far. Here he is once again up top. Flips it over to Shannon. Screen from McKinley. Gets the switch. He's on now guarding Shannon. Shannon will work down low back up top from McKinley. Walker's guarding. Crossover. Step back. Three. Kobe McKinley. Nice pull. He, he is fully embodying an NBA legend. Team points for Kobe McKinley. David Ego looking to respond from the corner and he does so. 26-22. Great ball game so far. This is what we expected from these two squads to the top GLVC powerhouses this year. Here's McKinley. Great game so far. Driving in. Foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. McKinley today, 15 points, 6 for 8 shooting, 3 for 3 from outside the arc. And now some free throws for the first time all afternoon. He's 67% from the stripe so far this season. McKinley, he's 8th in the GLVC in scoring, 5th in steals, 2 of his top stats. But 2 shots in the line for him to increase his total here in the first half. McKinley's first free throw is long. McKinley was a part of the GLVC all, de all defensive team two years ago. He's part of the all tournament team at the Spear Funeral Home Classic this season. And he's got a season high 28 Both points. Both free throws miss as you hear the you suck chance from the fans. <laughs> May have gotten his head a little bit either way. He missed both free throws, McKinley. The Greyhounds trail by four. Nearing the under eight. Bingham up top has some space and let one go, but he'll get the roll to Cho who lost it. Possession arrow going the way of William Jewell. Another tie up on that end, and that'll bring us to our media. Back inside here at the University of Indianapolis with the home crowd. I don't know if they're disappointed or whatnot, but they're down by four right now. The spirits are high team. still. Spirits are high still early on here. Still a lot of ball to be played here on Thursday night. Ball in the hands of just a sudden he got fouled, a reaching foul there from Dylan Ingram. Not in the bonus quite yet. R. Williams, well, that was the fifth foul on the Greyhounds. In the, in the game for the first time for William Jewell, and that's Good stuff. Wearing the number four out of Luton, England. Here's Sutton with the ball. He wants to get a good set now. And he'll get it for the first time. He'll roll to the right side, pass on Greg Ford to shoot. Two. He had a lot longer to shoot, but the, 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 the fans are counting down about two seconds ahead of hand, and I think they got him. Sean Craig handoff for times. Greyhounds down by four, looking to chip away this lead still. Bingham, two defenders guarding, is getting trapped. Great ball movement though, Dylan Ingram in the corner, three ball fell short, rebound into the hands of Jordan Germain. And here come the Cardinals once again. Germain still with it, Sean Craig guarding. That screen arrives from Wingert at the switch. Choa is now guarding Germain. And he almost away with Jermaine spins past it, pump faking, going over to Patterson, whose three ball is nothing. But I mean, they're five for eight on the day today for William Jewell. I mean, these guys got a clip on that is for sure. Ingram with it now goes up top wide open. Jesse Beaman no, can't get it to go, but Choa and one on the rebound, indicating. That's, that's, that's big man energy right there. Flexing as he's sitting on the ground. Kendrick Shoa, that's what he can do on the floor. And he'll have one more. 
at the line, chance to have to it. Tyler Ingram checks out, bringing back in Jarvis Walker. And on cue, there's Kobe McKinley checking back in. The man of the hour so far. A free throw for Kendrick Chola today. He has four points. He's over two from the line so far. And they get over three from the line. Can't get that one to go. Greyhound still trailing by five. Here's Goodson with the ball. Now it's passed into Sutton and back over to Patterson. Patterson with it back up top. Around the arc, they work with McKinley. Good, so it's open on that down, down, down low momentarily. Patterson with it, going to his left, spinning. Gio to see logo mid-ring jumper, no good. Choa rebounds. Choa's seventh rebound already in the early going here. Walker with it. Greyhounds have been working through their offense, taking a lot of this time up. Tines, left, you look at your speed. Stops Sean Craig, pump fake, driving inside into the body of William Jewell and Justice Sutton. And he drew a foul and will get two shots for the effort. Sean Craig at the line this season. He's 54% the line, hasn't seen the line much this year. But a chance to better that total so far. Craig's first is no good. Greyhounds today are two for six in the line. One more for Craig, though. The back end of the two shots falls in. Four-point game. The point guard, Trey Shannon with it. Graduate student guard. Times right up in on Jermaine. Greyhound's not looking to allow any space to get a shot off. Here's McKinley, though. We know he can do with the ball in his hands. 15 points so far. Flips it over to Shannon, thinking about it, working on Shoa. Under 10 to shoot for McKinley. Back over a tough contested three. Jermaine is strong, fighting for the rebound. Craig got his leg taken out by Tynes, but eventually they work through it. Tynes into the corner. Bingham, a three ball is no good. It was a good look for Bingham, but it can't get that one to fall on the Greyhounds. Still trail by four. McKinley behind his back, crossing over, now working on Choa. He'll go into the lane, pump faking. Beautiful move, McKinley. 17 to his total. Yeah, he's on track to pass. Season high. And that was, what, Lincoln, 17? So he's got 17 points out, season high, 28. So looking for a dunk home, couldn't get it to Bingham this second chance, and knocks that one home. The Greyhounds are staying within this four-point mark. But haven't been able to overcome that hump yet. William Jewell doing a great job of keeping the Greyhounds at a distance. Shannon. Now in the hands of Sutton working on Craig behind his back. He's going to work up on Craig. Now back to the right. Cut inside. Rolls Ooh. out. Somehow Isaac Patterson couldn't get that one to fall. I don't know if Kendrick got his fingers on Bingham it. Down low he goes. Right in the body of the defense. Can't get the shot to go. We got foul two more free throws to the Greyhounds. And this time for Jesse Bingham. His first trip to the charity side today. This season he's 69% from the line. We know what Bingham can do. He's a leading scorer point, uh, per game for the Greyhounds. About 15 points per game. He's 10th in the conference in the scoring. Also has two of the top 10 stats. Number four in blocks. Number 10 in steals. Bingham at the line. His first is no good. The Greyhounds three for eight from the line so far today. Leaving some points to the line. Steinfeld and Ingram check in. Craig and Cho a sit. One more for Bingham. Seven points so far. Second one is good. Three point ball game. And they're in the four minute mark in this one. So half time at least. Shannon with it. Flips it over into the hands of Patterson. Plenty of shooters on this team now in the game. That's Luke Jordan, number 11. Now McKinley goes into the corner. Jermaine jab steps twice, kicks it over to Shannon. Somehow controlled that one. One handed off the pass. Nice corral inside. Luke Jordan freshly in the game. Front rim, no good. Rebound goes into the hands. No advice of Patterson. Kicks it over. One more try for William Jewell from outside. Jordan Jermaine. 
And you do that in front of Paul Corsar, I mean, that's going to get him heated up, and you see it right there. Josiah Times, this team now down by six. He'll work to the right side, a tough loader, and the foul. The hoop and the harm. And another and one for the Greyhounds. Time for the free throw. Out of the timeout, Josiah Times, one free throw only after the basket was made, plus the foul, a chance to cut it into a possession game here with 3.20 to go in the first half, and he can't do so. Another missed free throw for the Greyhounds. They are four for ten, forty percent from the stripe today. Craig almost. I feel like the Greyhounds just can't time. get past that four point deficit. They keep getting here, but they can't. They haven't gotten past it since I think the ten minute mark. Here, Shannon, body hand off times. Back up top of Luke Jordan. Shannon once again. The Kenley coming around. Shannon will take it himself. He will spin. Lose control. Four to shoot. Turn around. Jay, no good. Kick back home. How did that ball creep over the rim? Because Isaac Patterson does what Isaac Patterson Isaac does Isaac Patterson. Best. 36 to 30. Patterson with 10 for himself now. Here's Sean Craig. One down low for Choa. Two defenders guarding. He'll spin. He'll get fouled. Two more free for the Greyhounds. Choa so far today. 0 for 3 from the stripe. One more foul on the Greyhounds will be in the only little bonus right now. It's the one and one, but it was a shooting foul, so it doesn't matter. Two shots on this one for Choa. The first free throw is good. One more for Choa, but a sub will come in beforehand. And that will be Joe Zank, the freshman forward. Didn't see him at all on the January 13th matchup. First time we've got to see Joe Zang. Cho will get both three throws to fall. It's a four-point game once again. And like I said, that four-point mark. Now the difference is, you really can get a big stop here and capitalize on the next one. He's been saying that for a few minutes now. We'll see if they can here. Here is Zang. Wide open was Luke Jordan down low. And there's an injury down on the floor. Looks to be a Greyhound and Jarvis Walker. So we'll go ahead, step aside here on Unity TV and the GLVC Sports Network. Welcome back in. Drums Walker walking on, walked off on his own power on the end, on the right end of the bench now. Hope the hitting is all right, obviously, for Jarvis Walker. Hope he's nothing too serious. The Grand's already, already without Paul's Niskus today due to an injury. Timetable to be determined for him. But in the meantime, still got two and a half minutes, still half time. William Joel still with the ball. It's Isaac Patterson. To inbounds. He gets it in. Jermaine back to Patterson. And something over to Shannon. Looking around the arc with their, with their top players. The foul's going to be called down low on Zach Zool. That'll be Zool's second. And we just saw in the corner that we saw Jarvis Walker heading back into the tunnel for a little bit of further examination. One more foul before the bonus plays into effect for the grant for William Zool, I should say. They lead by four and they inbound over top to Zang. Zang with it working back to the right side. Nowhere to go with the ball. Got stuck momentarily. But get it, got to get it back into the hands of Isaac Patterson working on Kendra Toa. Once the ISO. Crossing over. Now flips it over to Shannon with five to shoot. Zool. Patterson pump faking all by himself. Can't get to go too long. Longerbell goes into the hands of William Jewell and the foul is going to be called on the Greyhound once again. Now the bonus will be into effect. A one and one for William Jewell coming up. 
I'm incorrect about that. Actually, one more foul. My apologies until the bonus takes effect. But that foul was calling Kendrick Choa, and now Zach Zulchek out on two fouls. That was the first on Choa. The seventh team foul will put William Jewell in the bonus. Once again, not a math major, a comm major. You know, they always say comm majors aren't good at math, and I'm right beside you there on that one, man. I mean, I can do simple math. I get the full deficit. Look at that. So smart. <laughs> Driving inside is Justin Sutton. Stuck on the baseline. Tapped away by Jesse Bingham in the limb bounds from under the basket on the baseline. Seven seconds still to shoot on the shot clock. The Grand House looking for a stop and a chance to finally get past that four point deficit. Patterson will inbound. Gets it right inside. Going into the body. Blocked from behind by Bingham. He came flying in. Here goes Tynes. Down the floor to Dylan Ingram. Back up to Tynes. Will slow things down. Don't need to be out of control and in a rush. So they slow things down. Now Tynes. Offensive motion. Stolen away by Shannon. Wasn't able to save it. But it was a great read by Trey Shannon. To intercept that pass. The Greyhounds will inbound. A fresh shot clock. Actually, they'll, they'll make it 14. They'll say that he didn't have to just know the ball when he went out of bounds. So we'll make it 14 on the shot clock and bring him the inbound. Gray Hounds had a screen down low. They want times up high. And they get it into him. Cannon guarding. 10 to shoot. Times with it. Working the left side. Zane comes to help. They go down low. The ball is over. Thrown into the hands of Cho. Almost the backboard. Two errant passes from the side at times lead to a turnover for the Greyhounds. William Jewell, four point advantage as we're near the end of the half. Ball in the hands of Trey Shannon. The side at times guarding. He looks to the right side, wide open down low with Zang, but Dylan Ingram came flying in out of nowhere. His half hour on away. A minute left in the first half, times with the ball. Dylan Ingram Bingham up top looking drive himself look, has the retreat back outside and a pass tipped away a foul is going to be called on William Jewell so I think two free throws coming up here for the Greyhounds a foul on Joe Zeng and it'll be now double bonus in effect for the Greyhounds two free throws for Kendrick Choa so far today, six points, two for five from the stripe, also seven rebounds to his name. But he has two more chances from the stripe here to cut into this lead. The first one is no good. Front rim, back rim, and out. Still one more for Choa, though. Trying to finally get past this four-point deficit. They've been trailing by for the majority of the first half. And that one is good. Three-point ball game, 46 and a half left on the clock. Until the halftime buzzer rings. Getting the inbound to Shannon. Hello quickly. Hands off. Now the hands of Sutton. Back up top four. Jermaine who drives right. Foul called. Now the bonus will be in effect for the Cardinals. A one and one coming up for William Jewell and Jordan Jermaine. He's 88% from the charity stripe. That's second on the team this season. A one and one. Lord Germain. He leads the team in points per game with 18. Also leads the team in assists with three. He's fourth in the conference in scoring eight in the conference in assists. And top ten in both three point and free throw percentage. Here is that free throws at the line. The first one is good. So one more for Jermaine. 37, 33, 37 to go here in the first half. One more for Jermaine at the free throw line. Looking to get the five point ball game once again. That one is no good. A rare miss from Jermaine at the strike. The four-point lead remains. About six seconds separating clock on him game clock here before the first half comes to an end. Times with the ball. Choa down low well, working on Zhang. Lost it but got looking in the corner for Sean Craig. A three ball. It does not rim in. Rebound in the hands of William Jewell. They can take the last shot of the half. They like to do so. I'm sure they'd be content in doing so. Leading by four. It's Jermaine. With seven to shoot. Looking on Toa Hill drive inside. Got fouled before the shot. So another one and one coming up for Jordan Germain. Uh, 
That's the second on Kendrick Cho right before the half, too. We'll see if they call it a shooting foul or a on the court foul. They call it on the court. It'll be a one and one for Jordan Jermaine. Second time at the line in the last few seconds. Jermaine's first is good. One more. Going to strike before we close the half out. A strong showing from William Jewell so far on the floor of the Greyhounds. The Cardinals put down the Greyhounds about a month and a half ago, and now they own a six-point lead here at the home of the University of Indiana for William Jewell. But they lead this one. Now we'll try things again. Times to inbound once again. The Greyhounds have changed their look as well. Times will inbound. Off the court he goes into Jarvis Walker. Three on the clock has to get one up. Does so. That one's going to be too strong off the top of the basket. And no good. The Greyhounds trail by six. 39-33 heading into the halftime break. But a quick interview with head coach Paul Corsaro. Landon, what do you got for us? Trailing by six going into the half. What's going to need to change and what's the game plan? You got to hit a free throw. It's got to rebound better. Thank you. And then you're also leading the rebound category over William Jewell. How does that feel? Not, not good because we're not rebounding well enough. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank but, you. Thank you. Jake, Jake, we're going to take a little break. We'll be back after halftime on the GLBC Sports Network.
Who's ready for some second half basketball? Nickerson Hall, Landon, you're raising your hand. I think you're ready. Brandon's Brandon raising his hand. hand. Evan's raising, raising his hand. hand. Everyone's ready for some second half basketball action here on UAT TV and the JNLVC Sports Network. 39-33 your halftime score. The William Jewel Cardinals, 16 and 8, 10 and 6 in the JNLVC. They've come in and so far they're pulling off what could be a stunner. The Greyhounds are 17, 7, 13 and 3. I'm going to call it a stunner. As William Jewell already, already beat this Greyhound squad a month and a half ago on the 13th of January. That was at William Jewell in Liberty, Missouri. That was a two-point win for the Cardinals. This game following a similar script so far. The Greyhounds trailing early, but Landon coming out of the halftime break. Obviously, you talked to Coach Corsaro during halftime with a wedgie. Meanwhile, on one of the hoops, you got a ball stuck in the... It happens to the best of us. I had to, I had to call it out, but... As I was saying, <laughs> coming out of the halftime break, obviously you've heard from Corsaro. What is your take on what the Greyhounds need to do to win this game? I mean, making shots. I mean, like like what Corsaro said, you got to do better on the field goals. you got to do better on the free throws. I mean, nothing's really flowing their way. I mean, the only thing they really have going for them is that they're able to lead in the rebound category. You know, that. The only winning that by four right now. William sure. Jewell is 13 in the conference in rebounding. UND's number two. So in all honesty, the Greyhound should be winning that category by a decent margin. Yeah, I mean, you'd think they would, but yeah, William Jewel right now is definitely picking up right where they left off about a month ago. So, I mean, also, can we just talk about how awesome Kobe McKinley has been? Oh, 100%. 17 points, 3 for 3 from outside the yard. He's taking all the smart shots. He hasn't forced anything by any means. He's doing what needs to be done on the floor, and he's knocking him down. He's a very critical basketball player. Like, he's like critical thinker. Like, he's smart. He's very tactical when he plays. I mean, obviously, I mean, your name's Kobe, and you're wearing number 24. I mean, yeah. you're, you're honoring that man pretty pretty dang well. Well, the Greyhounds out of the halftime break. They're 4 of 15 from outside the arc, 27%. A bit below their season average of 36%. See if they can't improve that mark. The clock ticks down here. We'll get both teams back on the floor and get back into some GLVC basketball. Two of the top team basketball. Two of the top teams in all of the conference and honestly all of the region. Both teams, like I said, were named to that top ten in the region in the first consideration for the Midwest Regional. The Greyhounds last year, obviously, they were the host of the Midwest Regional. They fell first round to fellow GLVC pro in the McKendry Bearcats who Currently on the six game winter of the JLVC, so we'll hear their name at some point. I'm sure, but here's Bingham to get it started with two points. And Landon, <laughs> I mean, that's a better points. way. We're back to that four point deficit though. It's been there for a minute, hasn't it? Nothing really, like you said, Jace, at the, at the, excuse me, in that first half. They always keep getting that four point barrier and they just can't seem to break that yet. They're definitely looking forward to changing that. Sutton will drive in, looking to do a spit and lead again. Got stuck out in the paint, had to take it back to Topper McKinley. McKinley thought about a three, super three today, got bumped slightly, eight to shoot, gets over to Sutton. Now over to Patterson, four to shoot, has to get one off, working on Walker, pushing off, getting one off, and can't get it to go. The jaw down the floor, he comes, and his team down by four, looking to get past that four point deficit. Just high up times, now Jarvis Walker. Walker will look to drive, Bingham now over to Tines in the corner, pump faking, jumping past. And Aaron pass, Bingham recovers it over to Ejaw. Wanted to flip it over to Walker. Trying to make the extra pass there was Ejaw to Walker. Maybe it wasn't the right decision as the ball got to out of bounds. 12 seconds, though, still to shoot on the shot clock. And Bingham will inbound. Yeah, Bingham, so far, he's leading the day in points. 10 points on the day. The next close to him, Kendra Choa, David Ejaw with 7 apiece. Walker, top of the key. So we're rolling. Walker will go inside. Got it blocked away and out of play. Four seconds remaining on the shot clock. No foul call. A lot of contact. I thought Walker was going to go up for a dunk there momentarily. The way he was preparing his body, it was like, but four to shoot. Times will inbound. Over the top for Choa. Collects it. Inside, no good. McKinley rebound. Deficit remains four as they get the ball back over to McKinley. Hasn't missed from the arc yet. Spinning back to right, gets it back, roll back over to Trey Shannon. Behind his back, Cass Walker, Slick, and Shannon. And it back to McKinley to reset. 
Reese are the offense here. McKinley will put that one to Sutton. Seven to shoot for the Cardinals. Walker taps that one away. Here he goes down the floor. Two defenders on him. Up and block. Got it and one. I said blocked by accident, but that was on me. I meant he, he almost, it almost got blocked. And either way, Walker, the hoop and the harm once again. To the Walker seal, those two defenders, one of them, I thought they could get the block up there, but timed it wrong and dismantled Walker and Walker at the bucket through the contact and a chance to add one more, making a one point game. I mean, not bad for getting your first points of the day, you know, Jarvis. We saw him go out. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean about that. He's back in since the injury. So he, we saw him at the very end of the first half, and he's back in here now. So Jarvis Walker definitely putting his body on the line today. Walker's free throw, good. One point ball game. They got past the four point margin, but can they keep it here and take the lead? Even the Greyhounds have not led all game long. The game hasn't even been tied at all. It's been all William Jewell leading the entirety of the game, although it has been close. The ball in the hands, top of the key, three ball Jermaine, no good. A chance for the Greyhounds to get their first lead of the contest. Here's Bingham driving in, down the baseline, left hand. He can't get it to go, the rebound. McKinley tips it to himself. Greyhounds can't get that lead quite yet. McKinley gets that one back up to Winder. Winder gets the ball into the hands of Jermaine. He'll drive to the right side and pass Bingham. He goes off the window and perfection on the layup for William Jewell lead back to three Tines will work to the right look back over to Eve on top of the key looking for a tie ball game and we got one 41-41 the first tie of the game a big three from Eve he's at two of those now today two for three from outside the arc and both of those threes well timed so far from Eve tie ball game looks over to McKinley top of the key is McKinley 17 points for him, Hill drive looking for 19, got fouled, a chance to add two at the free throw line. Foul called on and Jesse Bing, that's his first foul. Four Greyhounds have two fouls to the name, Ia Joshua, Ingram, and Azul. And two shots for Kobe McKinley, 17 points today, 0 for 2 from the line though. He shoots about a 67% flip from the strike. Here's the first for McKinley. That one is strong. I mean, McKinley, I mean, three-pointers, he's been a dagger. Free throws have not been tied to him today. He's hit all three threes. He's missed all three free throws. Just keep it like that. I don't know if it's a Zewity crowd that's getting to him. The fourth free throw, that one falls in. That's on you, Landon. You say something about I'll, it. I'll take, I'll take that one. That one's on me, guys. My bad. <laughs> One point game, 42-41. Eja, another one for him. Looks to be strong. It is strong. The backspin and off a cardinal. And now to play the entire bench for the Greyhounds. Step and point of the way. That they believe the ball should go and they got what they wanted. So go in, bound of Greyhounds can take that, can take that first lead of the day right here. Time, we're gonna end bound. Has to go over the top to Choa. A tough inbounds pass back to Tynes. Now he'll roll. Over to Walker, open, corner, three, 44-42, Greyhounds. Greyhounds have come out with a vengeance from outside the arc, two threes have given them the lead. I don't know if Jarvis Walker got superpowers after getting knocked down earlier, but it's working for him now. <laughs> Ball in the hands of Jermaine, his team now for the first time all day, dishes it over, back up top from McKinley, thought about it, now an open look for Isaac Patterson, and they respond, the Cardinals, back on top by one, Tines on that down the floor quickly, but back things out now with John once again, top of the key. He'll work to his left side now, get the ball to his right hand, backing down the defender and Patterson going right into the body. Back up top for Walker, catches that one with 10 to shoot. He looks to drive behind his back, step back, thought about it. Now Tynes top of the key, five to shoot. Driving, left hand, tough shot. Tynes can't get it to go. William Jewell corrals the rebound down and down the floor. That'll work. Under 16, media timeout, that's dead ball. Jermaine with it, left hand spinning right on time, dishing into the corner, back to top, great ball movement in the hands of Trey Shannon, three ball is rolling in, and Landon, what's the deficit? Four, my answer is four, 
I was going to answer, but no, you just decided to barge it. My bad. It's all good. My bad. Deficit back to four once again. Walker with the ball. He's had a great second half so far. Bingham. Driving through, and that's just too easy for Bingham. If he gets in front of the defender down low in the paint, call it game over, because he's going to get this focus all day long. Game over, say your prayers, do whatever you can, because... And they pay his mess. Up to 12 points, leading to the Greyhounds. Two Greyhounds in double figures, both him and E. John. E. John has 10. There's Weinker. Back to McKinley. He had the score so far. Minus the free throw in this half. Rolling is Weinker. Good contest from Choa. Rebound E. John. And on the floor, he goes behind his back, slowing things down. And back to Times. Choa screen left, so roll back to the right side. Eja straight away. Three ball, David. Eja is on fire. Three for five. Sixty percent. That is insane for David Eja. Thirteen points leads the way for the Greyhounds. UND back on top. One point lead. Fourteen minutes to play in this one. McKinley with the left wing. Back over to Patterson. Hand off for Shannon. Trey Shannon with it with seven to shoot. Driving left side. He got past time. Good contest, but Shannon just muscling way, his way through and adjusts to get that one. Times with it once again. Choa. Long back to the left side. Back top for Eja. Will he pull another one? No, because Choa's open down low. He lost it momentarily, but got his own rebound. Just tell you, I mean, uh, Kim I don't know why I said Times. For a long day. But either way, Kendrick Choa got his own rebound up and in. Real. Got a seven nation army chance going out here. <laughs> it's always great to have a crowd out here at Nickerson Hall. But driving once again, William Jewell, another drive, another basket, and a timeout called by head coach Chris McCabe. What a day of basketball it's been here in downtown Indianapolis. Women's game preceded this one, 90 to 80 to got the win in that one. That was a fun, fun, entertaining basketball game. We got another one here as Zach Zool newly checked in, crossing over a defender, but gets back to Bingham. It's a one-point ball game here at Nicholson Hall on the campus of the University of Indianapolis. Bingham lifted right side, left side, I should say. Walker wants to drive in, able to do so. Mid-range is left short, but Choa gets the rebound. Another one for Choa? Sure, why not? Tipped away, though. William Jewell is stuck on the side, though. And they get it out somehow. McKinley. They think McKinley's yet, yet to take a shot in this half so far. And thought about it working on Zach Zool. A foul's going to be called on Zool. Had a little shove in the back. Oh, Shannon. That's going to be Zool's third. He has two, two more fouls to spare. He's on the bench as it stands. McKinley will inbound for the Cardinals. His team up by one. Been a great ball game so far, but only four Cardinal players have scored in this game. And they lead. Weinger has not one of them. And it's blocked away off the glass by Choa. And then a travel by William Drew. What a play by Kendrick Choa. Off the glass. Not, that is not some, allowing anything in this house. That is some heads up style play there from Kendrick Choa. I had just mentioned that only four corner players had scored. Weinger wasn't one of them. And Choa made sure Weinger wasn't going to be one of them. We'll clean up the slippery spot on the floor at the free throw line on the left side and we'll get back underway. This is the kind of game you're expecting them. These two teams, second time they played this year and maybe a third looming in the GNLVC tournament in just a few weeks' time. Times with it, he drops the left side. Stuck down low, gets it back up for John Craig, free throw line. Being now right side. Jules picking with it every step of the way, but Sean, I mean, Bingham got past everybody. Couldn't get the layup to go, and the rebound goes into the hands of William Jewell. Down goes Johnson. Back up top. Down hands of Weinberg. Lost militarily, and look at that hustle from Kendrick. Joa, right away. Josiah, signs. He's... I wish he would have slammed it, but it's okay. Either way. I think everyone, I think everyone was expecting it to at first. But how about the hustle from the big man down there? To tap that one away and get it over to Tynes and the Greyhounds to lead back up by one. 53-52. Trey Shannon with it. Picks it over to McKinley. 
Will he pull? No. Jimmy with the ball. The call a foul on Sean Craig. We're trying to stick right with him. Corsaro imitating. Great ball game. Now we're out of the media timeouts. We'll have hopefully a few consecutive minutes of action here. One point ball game still. The home team Greyhounds in the lead. Over the Cardinals. A tough contest there. Hands off Jermaine. Down the baseline. Higo kicks it back up top. Trace hands. Three ball money. William Jewell. Some smart offensive basketball. Finding the open shooters and making the Greyhounds pay. Times with it. Rolling right back up top for Choa. Saw Ejo there. He was sitting on. He was open. Craig's going to drive. Left hand. Back up top for Jay Walk. Walker's going to drive inside. Mid-range jumper. going to fall. So his own rebound got fouled. He got blocked away by Weininger. But two shots coming up for Jarvis Walker. Walker came in second half with a vengeance. Six points. I think all of which are second half points. Let's get another look at this. Got his rebound, got tripped up, I think a, a flailing maybe, foot from someone got uh, maybe, his leg. Maybe Winger? Or Winger, I should say? Not 100% sure, but Jarvis Walker at the free throw line for two shots. So far today, Walker one for one from the line, make it two for two. <laughs> Chance to tie this one up for the second time in the contest. Tides checks out. Bingo checks in. One more for Walker from the stripe. Looking to tie this one up, and he cannot do so off the front rim. Ejaw went over the back there, trying to get the rebound, and that'll be a foul on him. Trying to hop over. Yeah, Ejaw's going to be careful, too, because that's his third foul. So the Cardinals leading by one, ten and a half to play. Two players went into each other, and somehow Jermaine came out with the ball, and then an errant pass from the... The uh, Cardinals leads to Greyhound ball once again. E. John inbounds over the top to Jarvis Walker. It's been a slow paced game, so I feel like most of this game, most teams kind of working through their half court offense for most of the game, taking up the entirety of the shot clock, most possessions. John Craig finds Walker. Corner. Three. No. Rebound. William Jewell. Go around the court. That's Jermaine. Back over to McKinley. Looking for four. For four from outside the arc. No. He finally misses one from three-point range. That was the first field goal he's taken all half. A crossover from Ejaw. Pass the defender. He goes down the court. Looking for a poster. Couldn't get it to go. What a foul called. Everyone was ready to explode. I was, Caden was, Jace, I'm looking over at you, you're holding on to me, man. That would have been a highlight of all highlights if you would have finished that one. But either way, he gets two chances at the free throw line. Whew. Everyone, take a breath as he misses the free throw. Heart rate's coming down just a tiny bit, but that looked oh, awesome. Oh, you could tell he wanted to do it too. You got past, you got past the defender, the open lane was, it was, it was there. But one more, it's high the ball game up for E. John. He gets that one, 55 apiece. But if I tell you, if E. John would have finished that off, this place would have lost it. That football team would have lost it over there. That's, I mean, <laughs> out of anybody here. Jermaine with it, left wing, tie ball game. Under 10 minutes to play in this one in regulation. Kicks over to Shannon, thought about it. At the top of McKinley. He'll drive this time, going inside, blocked away by Sean Craig. Defensive effort. Eja behind the back. Hero stepping into the body of one. A blocking foul. Will be called on the floor. The Greyhounds will end that. Will they call it a shooting foul on the floor? They'll call it a shooting foul. It looks nice. So Eja will get two more shots. Eja behind the way. Ball handling. These last plays have been, have been phenomenal. Two more. Finesse. Two more for David Eja. Game time of 55 apiece. Ejaw leading score for the Greyhound so far. Adds to that total, makes it 15 now, 4 to 5 from the strike. And he's on, he's on, on pace. 
to break, you know, season and career high. I mentioned earlier, his season career high, 17 points at Pitt Johnstown. And me and Caden made that trip. And that was a very fun game. He always lights out that game, too. He had a phenomenal game, but 16 points to his name right now. His team leading by two in the, the GNLVC showcase here between two of the best teams in the conference. Driving left is Jermaine under the basket. He is. Ejaw guarding up 13 to shoot. Rolling back around. He's done all around the paint. And he got blocked away by Ejaw. And he saves it for Jesse Bingham. How? David Ejaw take a bow. Here he is once again. Straight away three ball. David Ejaw no. Rebound goes back out to Travis Walker though. Ejaw is feeling it. Sean Craig hands off for Walker. Greyhounds control. With the ball up by two. Jarvis Walker working left side, eight to shoot on the shot clock. Nowhere to go with it, gets back to E. John with five to shoot. Down low for Choa. Gets past two defenders, got it tipped away though by Sutton. And now the floor Sutton is gonna go on E. John. E. John, another block for David E. John! And then saved into the hands of Trey Shannon. David E. John is doing it all on the floor. Trey Shannon now drives down to the baseline. Jermaine with it with 13 to shoot, working on Jarvis Walker. Sean Craig following Sutton, and Sutton gets off the window and good. Tie ball game once again, but whew, David Eja showcasing his talents in full form today. Jarvis Walker. Hands off for Craig. Eja once again mid-range. Jay from Eja is no good. 57 apiece still. Next stop it will be the under eight media timeout. We have a phenomenal ball game here. Emotions, man, are, <laughs> emotions are high, tensions are high, man. I'm trying not to be a fan. I mean, how could you not love this type of basketball? And speaking of the under eight, here it is, the under eight media timeout. What better way? 7.34 is what separates us. And a winner. Well, maybe a winner. It could still be overtime even in this one. They decide between a winner and a loser. They decide between a winner and a loser, but we still have plenty of basketball to be played here. And, you know, we're nearing the month of March. This has that March feel to it, doesn't it? Very, very March, yes. This is March Eve. It is March Eve, nearing the end of the month. Step back, long range, two, no good. Bingham the rebound down the floor. The Greyhounds come game, not enough for 57. Bingham driving. Back top for Ejo. Open. He'll drive inside. Hero stepping. David Ejo blocked away by McKinley. McKinley can do more than just score. It's the second block of the game. Winger with it. Cross court. Way over the head of John, of Jermaine. Uh, some lucky fans going to be able to keep the game basketball. No, what well, back in the hands of the ref, actually. I know. Just, just let me have my moment. Never. <laughs> No moments to be had here other than some basketball <laughs> memories. And fun times. Sure. Whatever pleases you, I know. <laughs> Bingham up top. This is still knotted up. David Eja wants a three, and he has another one. David Eja. Did you see Corsaro do the gladiator pose? <laughs> no. <laughs> David Eja, 19 points, a new career high for him. About the night he's having so far for himself. The Greyhounds have their largest lead of the game by three. David Ejaw has a new season, a career high 19 yeah. points. He's only going to build off that. McKinley driving, got it to go, plus the foul, the hoop in the arm for McKinley this time. He's up to 20 points and a free throw with a chance to tie the ball game up once again. This is prime basketball. If you like basketball, then you are witnessing a great game. McKinley at the line today, one for four from the stripe. A chance to nine up at 60, at 60 apiece though. And he can, and he does so. Also, double double for Isaac Patterson, 13 points, 10 rebounds. And Kinder Choa a point away from that double double as well. Choa currently on the bench as Times playing the point guard role for the Greyhounds. Bingham with it. And on McKinley off the glass. Jesse Bingham, what can't he do? He really is that all-around guard that every team would love to have. I mean, he I can don't know. shoot, he can drive, he can do mid-range, he can do it. He can, he's de defensively sound in all aspects as well. 
Jesse Bay will, def- will definitely go down and forever in the UND, UND record book as one of the best players that ever stepped foot here. An errant pass out of bounds, another turnover by William Jewell. That's their ninth of the game. The Greyhounds leading by two, 5.39 to play. The tensions, you're right, they are high here. And Hendrick Cho will check in for the Greyhounds. Both Chris McCabe and Paul Corsaro know what this game means in the landscape of GLVC and even the regional tournament. Greyhounds looking to lock up that one seed. All they would need is probably two of four wins to end out the season to get that. They also want to complete their standing in the Midwest Regional Tournament as Bingham slams that one home. Four point lead for the Greyhounds. Landon, you have your hands on your head across the way. Kate Clifford standing up now. No way. <laughs> Bingham <laughs> rose up higher than the Raptors. And then the Greyhounds here on defense. Eight to shoot for McKinley. Pump faking. Edward Patterson from downtown Indianapolis. That was from the Salesforce Tower. I mean, how could you not like this kind of basketball? I mean, one this point is ball awesome. game. Here's Tynes. Toa up top. Walker driving right down the lane. He goes. No shot. They won't call this one. They call the foul on the floor. And that'll be the 16th foul on Williams. Will one more put the Greyhounds in the bonus. So the Greyhounds will end out from under the basket. Anyone talk about two elite teams playing basketball? Well, this is exactly what you're witnessing. This is two teams that know what they need to do in the clutch moments. And both teams making those plays right now. This is definitely an all-out tug of war in these final four and a half minutes. Bingham with it. It was time, time's up top, the shot clock, the reset, the 20 seconds. Time's working on Jermaine. He goes to Walker, he'll drive inside, the floater is pure. Rolling around the rim, and it falls. Three point lead, nearing the four minute mark. Off for Trey Shannon. 20 to shoot for the Cardinals. Wingert with the ball. Over to McKinley. 10 to shoot. Working on Ejo. I think he wants it himself. He has it back out and get over to Shannon. 5 to shoot. Working on Bingham. Over the head. Saved by William Jewell. Almost an impossible shot there. He tried it. But it there was a split, not fall. split second in my head. I thought there was no way that happened. 50 left to play. The Greyhounds lead by three. What a ball game we've had here at Nickerson Hall. We're becoming quite accustomed to these kind of games here in this arena this year. Haven't we? It's it's been a common theme. Choa up top. Bingham left side. He'll go ahead and drive the right down the middle. Free throw line jumper. Bingham rim no good. Choa strong rebound. Saves it over the top to Tynes. Great play by Choa to reset the shot clock. The Greyhounds back in order. Now Bingham tend to shoot. Working through the shot clock once again are the Greyhounds. Bingham will go to work now. Go drive right hand floater. That's Bingham. You allow Bingham that right handed floater, and 99% of the time that's probably going to be dropping out of the back of the net. He's inevitable. Greyhounds' largest lead is five now. Three minutes to play though. William Jewell, an open look from Isaac Patterson from three point range. Front rim, no good. Rebound off time, saved. My winger was his back out of bounds. Yes, it was. Greyhounds take possession of the ball, leading by five. It was a great effort from Eli Winger to try to save it, but his back hit part of the out of bounds line before he saved that one back in play. The Greyhounds looking to take control of this one now. Leading by five, Ejaw and Bingham the other way today with 19 and 18 apiece. And look at David Ejaw going to work with the... He's, the trying, to, he's, trying, to, he's trying to help too. David Ejaw really does do he, it all on the court, he, doesn't he? he? He's a jack of all trades, you know. Epic scorer. Trying to get that brother and up now there. Now they got a towel. 
on the floor. You mean to tell, man? Or no longer calling the basketball game or calling it clean. Thank you, David. <laughs> David Ejaw going to work not only in the basketball game, but on the floor. I think we're all good to throw a towel aside and let's play some basketball, shall we? Towel again? Nope. Times will split over. Go, go, go. <laughs> and it doesn't even make this sideline. Touchdown. Right away, after all the antics, we're back underway. <laughs> Five-point ball game. The building is quiet again, as we all know, the tension's rising. Time's letting time roll, up by five. No need to rush. Now they'll go in motion. Bingham, screen right, doesn't use it, goes over to Walker, flips it over to Tynes. One more pass for Ejo. A three ball is off the back rim. It's the rebound, though. Ejo. Here he goes into the body of one. No good. Rebound goes into the hands of Williams when they lost out of bounds. And somehow that is Williams' jewel ball. I think you might want to review that because I believe that went off for Williams' jewel from my angle at least. And what you see? All right, I think it should be Greyhound ball. but I thought it went off Williams on a rebound. But either way, they get the ball back down by five. The Greyhounds had a few good looks on that possession but couldn't get one to fall. Williams' jewel still in this one with Jermaine McKinley up top. Thought about... Taking a shot on. What a move. Footwork from McKinley. Blocked away and out of bounds. A foul's going to be called on the floor on the Greyhounds. They're just way too argy bargy there. It's going to go on David E. John. That's going to be his fourth personal foul. you got to be careful now for David E. John, especially with possibly an overtime period looming. Eli Winger at the free throw line, though. Two shots, he's 65% on the year. He has no he has no points today. And it'll stay that way, Landon. Good call. It, it finally works out in my favor. <laughs> also, we do have one new score, minus the four. Sutton has two points to his end, so five scores. And I'll make it six players with, a, with at least a point as Winger gets one to fall home. It's a four-point ball game. Well, land in a four-point deficit is back, but it has flip-flop sides. Times hand off for Bingham. Now E. Jock. Walker, I should say, left wing three. William Jewel down by four, under two minutes. Trey Shannon. Jordan Germain back to Shannon in the corner. E. Jock guarding tightly. Patterson back to Shannon. He'll drive right. Behind the back pass to Wingert. Flips it over. Contested three ball foul. Three uh, shots for Jordan Germain. Germain, three shots from the line. He has 12 points today. Three for four from the charity stripe on the season. He's 88%. Not the guy you want to foul. The first of three for Germain is good. I mean, he's an 88% shooter. Chances are your business could save thousands per year on toner, supplies, and repairs and improve productivity, all while getting best-in-class equipment. Three-point ball game. Two more free throws for Jordan Germain out of the timeout from head coach Paul Corsaro, second of which is good. Two-point game. Landon, this is going to be a close one. One more for Jermaine. Can he knock home all three? No. Misses the third of the three. And ladies and gentlemen, it's a one possession of ball game with 1.30 to go. Two of the top four GLVC teams this season going at it for the second time. The first one was a two-point Cardinal win. This time the Grand's looking to flip that script up by two right now. Bingham will drive left, free throw line, jumper, too strong, rebound McKinley. William Jewel a chance to tie or take the lead with a minute and some change left to go. Jordan Germain with it off the two free throws last time out. He'll drive right on Ejo behind his back. Thought about a jumper, no. McKinley, left wing. Germain with it up top. Crossover on Ejo behind his back. Ejo takes it away. Here goes Ejo down the floor. Can't off the Bingham will slow things down. 
Good pull back from the Greyhounds to waste some time off the clock. Two-point ball game. 20 seconds separating. Shot clock and game clock. Josiah ties with it. Over to Kendrick Showa. Now David Ejal all up top. 10 to shoot on the shot clock. Josiah ties with it. Over to Walker. Up top he is. Down low he goes. Three to shoot. Have to get one off. Here Ejal. From down. Down. Air ball. 20 seconds to go. 19.8 remains. And a chance for William Jewell. Down by two. Now we'll inbound. See if William Jewell lets take a timeout. If they'll play this one out. They're going to play it out. Here we go. Hands off for Shannon. 16 seconds to go. Cardinals down by two. McKinley in the corner. Shannon thought about it. Pump fake. Driving in. Floater. No good. And a foul is going to be called. A blocking foul on the Greyhounds. Booze rain. Nickerson Hall. Two shots for William Jewell to tie this ball game. Trey Shannon at the line. He is the best free throw shooter on this team. 90% from the line this season. Two of the biggest cuts of the season for William Jewell. The first one is no good. Trey Shannon is the best shooter and possibly all of the GLVC from the free throw line. The first one was no good, but one more for him to get a one-point ball game. That one is good. And the timeout will be called by head coach. The Greyhounds, they'll inbound. They lead by one. They'll inbound from their own side of the court. William Jewell brings some pressure. An expected foul from William Jewell ASAP because he's still the foul twice to get the Greyhounds in the bonus. Times will inbound. He gets it into Walker. He'll try to run the court, but there's the first foul. You have to foul one more time for the Cardinals to get him into the bonus. Gonna waste a good two or three seconds off the clock. Now, if you're the Greyhounds, you're, you're gonna wipe this into one of your best free throw shooters. So ideally, you're looking for someone like David Eja here. Times will inbound once more. And they get it in to just that man, David Eja. And he'll go to the free throw line for a one and one. David Eja of active players today is the best free throw shooter on this squad. 84%. So far today from the line, he's five for six. He leads the way, a career high, 19 points for David Eja. Looking for his first 20 point game in his college career right here. But it's a one and one. One shot here. If he makes it, he get one more. The first one from Eja is good. So he gets one more. One more for David Eja. William Jewell. That's the time off left. You'll expect him to use one after a miss or a make. Eja seconds. Ice in his veins. Timeout. Head coach Paul Corson. Both teams in contention of the Midwest Regional. Both teams trying to make sure they're in that Midwest Regional in just a few weeks' time. Inbounding is Kobe McKinley. See where they go. They get it in and a foul, and a smart foul from the Greyhounds. Foul. The theory for the Greyhounds here is you foul and you make William Jewell shoot free throws because they can't tie the game if they shoot free throws. And plus, it's only a one and one. Meaning, if they miss the first free throw, and the guy's gonna rebound, it's one free throw in this ball game. That's the right idea for the Greyhounds. And they sent Weinger to the line, who's only a 65% shooter this year for a one and one. He misses the front end here, the guy's gonna rebound, and then that might be your ball game, folks. Eli Weinger at the line. The front end of a one and one is good. And now if you're Williams, the discussion is do you purposefully miss trying to get a rebound or do you make and foul again? It's been a big discussion in the months uh, amongst all the basketball leagues recently. Weinger is going to try to make it, but he missed it. Rebound, David Ejaw. He'll be fouled with 4.4. 4. 
William Jewell wanted a possession arrow. They thought they tied that one up, and that would have gone the way of the Cardinals. But David Ejaw back to the free throw line, exactly the guy you would want there once again. You think two free throws would probably ice the win here for the Greyhounds. David Ejaw, another one and one for him. He already has his career high in 21 points. Why not add to it and get your team a win today? One and one from the line with 4.4 remaining. As the crowd quiets, can Ejaw ice this one for the Greyhounds? The front end of the one and one is no good. Rebound McKinley. Can they win the game? McKinley for the win. No good Greyhounds survive. 70-68 McKinley had a decent look at it for the ball game.